We're back and thanks for staying tuned. Uh, we're still talking about the countdown to the presidential election, which is barely five days away. Uh, we told you at the beginning of this segment that we're expecting Joey Bokwe, who is the publicity secretary, uh, the spokesperson of the APC in Lagos. But unfortunately, he's been held up in traffic, but we shall hook up to him using the phone line. And I understand he's already online. Good morning, Mr. Ibokwe. Hello, Mr. Ibokwe. If you can hear me, I'm Mr. Ibokwe. Good morning and welcome to the program. Hello? Yes, Mr. Ibokwe, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, very well then. Let's begin with the event of Saturday. Uh, the mega rally that um, held in the National Stadium or Tesla Balogun Stadium, I beg your pardon, Surulere, Lagos on Saturday. Uh, I, can't hear, I can't hear you. Speak up. The Tesla Balogun Stadium wasn't filled to capacity. Does that worry you as um, a Lagos, uh, the APC secretary in Lagos? What really went down on Saturday uh, during the APC rally? No, you are believing the lie. Tell us the truth. I said you are believing the lie. So tell us the truth. Why you there? I was there nine, nine o'clock God, I was there. And that stadium was filled to the brain. People who were outside are even more, more in number than those who are inside. And we have to wait for the president to come. He just got there almost to four. He went to three places in Lagos. He went to the above Lagos, went to see the organized private sector. I went to speak to, I went to look to launch the cancer equipment, you know, before coming to that place. And the heat was intensive and people started going. Mm. So I was there and he would have seen the pictures. Why do you join people who tell lies? Who think they're telling lies to help them to win a life? You are on the show to put things right for Nigerians to listen to you and not joining forces with anyone. But our correspondent was there and uh, we, of course we had our cameras there which got a, a, a number of pictures or footages of that, um, of that particular rally. I know, when, I, I know when your cameraman came. I was there at 9 o'clock. But cameras don't tell a lie. Go, go and look at the pictures. Go and look at the pictures. Go and look at the pictures. Mm. Take the pictures of the event before you go on air. It's not supposed to be an issue this morning. If I know that it's going to be the issue this morning, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been talking to you now. Mm. Because I don't know how to tell life. Mm. This election must be one with facts and figures. Truth. You know, not falsehood. You have me? Let me say one Let's, let's go the rally. Let's move away from the rally that was held on Saturday and let's look at other issues as it concerns um, Lagos State. In all fairness, what are the chances of your party in Lagos State? Is there any contest? There is no contest. Who are the candidates? PDP? Oh my God. Southwest, Lagos, do not like PDP. That's why they clear them out of Southwest. If you think PPP will gain one, one state in the Southwest and even one government in Lagos, then you cannot, you don't, you don't know what is on ground. Mm. They are not thinking that side at all. They cannot replace a party that gives Lagos to be the, the, the fifth largest economy in Africa. Lagos I can do without public allocations. Lagos that did not fit the bell out plans in 2016. Lagos has been striving, moving to get to the top largest economy in Africa. No, we can't hand over Lagos to look at some pilot guys. It's not possible. So, uh, we have Budukwe with us in the studio. Budukwe is the spokesperson for the All Progressive Congress in the state. So, of the PDP, rather, in the state, yes. And she just announced to us that of Jimmy Agbaje campaign organization, rather. Now, she said to us that the party had been refused, or rather, the party had, been, had, had experienced a lot of hiccup in the venue for their rally, that the powers that be seems to be working against them in the state. How true 
is this allegation? you are in motion hence the network might fail us uh, from time to time because you're in motion but we hope you could still get to the studio uh, before the end of this um, segment but um, some analysts have also considered Lagos to be to be a swing state it means that um, APC has no stronghold on Lagos state anymore because they have said that um, there is a dwindling influence of the ruling party here in Lagos can you uh, confirm that or otherwise no. All right, it's, uh, we would have to come back to uh, guest in Lagos here. Uh, we, we know that uh, Joy Bukwe is in transit and uh, the network might just feel which has actually happened now, but we hope that he gets here on time or at least gets to a place where the network is smooth. Let's talk about swing states now uh, before the elections. There are some states that we know are PDP states. There are some states we know are APC states. That is nothing any the opposition can do in either of those places to take the states. But people have considered Lagos states to be a swing state. Do you think really PDP has a chance uh, in this? Because APC has been in this state for 20 years. Do you think PDP has a chance? <laughs> Definitely PDP has a chance. Because, like I said earlier, you know, it's like a case of a man that marries a wife. And after some time, you know, he discovers that the wife is, you know, he finds fault with everything she, he or she, or she does, and they decide to go for a second wife. And after marrying the second wife, after some time, discover that the second wife is even worse than the first wife. You know, and then he decides to jettison the second wife and go back to the first wife. That is what is happening in Lagos State here. People have seen for themselves after four years of, talk of, of, of having the all progressive, progressive party in office that definitely the better choice for them is the People's Democratic Party because that is a truly democratic party. It is not owned by any godfather. It is not a potpourri of, of divergent interests. It is a party that is represented in all the 774 local governments in Nigeria. It has federal structure. It is, it is made up of men and women of substance who are genuinely Democrats, interested in, in looking out for the people of Nigeria. That is why the name of the people is even in that party, People's Democratic Party. It is not about one person. It is not about one person's interest. It is not about a tribe. It is not about a nationality. It is about the people of Nigeria. And that is where you have these people converging to ensure that from inception of this party, the interest of the people, it is what is burning in the heart of these individuals. It is not about any selfish motive. And Lagosians have seen that after witnessing a party in power since 1999. And well, they Lagosians have, uh, have also seen the development in Lagos. We have seen massive infrastructural de development in Lagos. We have seen uh, uh, mass transit being, uh, being brought up by the Lagos State government. We have seen different kinds of development in Niger in Lagos. So why would you think that, um, in, they say the devil you know is better than an angel you don't know. Why would you think that Lagos residents would rather go for an angel they don't know when the, the devil they know is performing? That was what the colonial masters were doing when they were here, before we got independence. They were constructing roads. They were building infrastructure. And this was even better than, than what we have now. This is what Mr. Luigi Mikola Wolagbaye calls incremental increase in leadership. 
I mean, in governance, you don't have to say that construction of roads should be your main priority in the 21st century. Let's pause Shimodupe, please. Uh, Joe Dupe is back online uh, because he's in transit. Let's just take him quickly and then we'll come back to you. Uh, Joe, you welcome back to the program. Joe, can you hear me, please? Mr. Ibokwe, if you're on the line, please, can you acknowledge? All right, I think we, we, we lost him again. All right, so you were, you were trying to make a submission on the fact that um, the this devil you know. We are not talking about incremental increase in delivering services to the people in the 21st century. Construction of rules is a normal duty of government. It is what you do on a day to day. It is like you casting news here and saying you are doing something extraordinary. That is what you are paid to do. But when you raise the bar and you go for trading courses or you win some numerous award or you do some dangerous assignments, then you have done something different. Construction of roads, renovating schools, or improving infrastructure, revamping infra infrastructure is not the yardstick we should be using to judge performance of governance in the 21st century. The world is talking about um, metro light rail. We need to move away from concentrating on roads alone. That is what Mr. Olujimi Kola Wulagwaji has been conversing for. That it is not about incremental delivery to the people. It's not about going to the market and giving them 10,000 naira. What will 10,000 naira do in the life of a human being? Nothing. It is not about saying we are constructing roads when people don't even have the ability to have three square meals a day to be able to go out and eat a decent living. You need to make sure that you grace the bar. You, you, you look for different ways, unique ways of making sure that service delivery to the people. Apart from concentrating on roads, anybody, if you are if the governor in Lagos State, you can construct roads. It is a normal day-to-day -day business. It is not something extraordinary. Anyone can construct roads as long as you have the allocation. But he's talking about in, in, me not looking beyond that, thinking I had risen the bar in governance, not just doing things the way it was done 100 years ago. Okay, yeah, so we are, we are told that uh, Mr. Joe is back online. Mr. Joe Ibuque, can you hear us? Hello, Mr. Joe. Acknowledge if you can hear us. Hello, Mr. Ibokwe, can you hear us? I'm afraid, I'm afraid yeah. we're having issues. Unfortunately, but we hope to have him uh, subsequently on the show to yes. talk about uh, the countdown to presidential election, uh, Lagos factor. Okay. Now, on a final note, uh, Mudupe, uh, like I said earlier, talking about the swing states, uh, PDP has some strongholds. I want to, I want to believe that, uh, I don't know if you would agree, uh, that river states might just be one of your strongholds. Well, the number of states in the South, South and South East might be your strongholds. But do you think that PDP is playing its cards well and APC or any other party wouldn't, you know, take over some of the states? Everyone in Nigeria know that PDP has a very strong foothold in the Southwest. In the places they claim that they are foothold, we know what obtained in those elections where PDP members were prevented, harassed, and intimidated from voting. We knew where PDP candidates won in those elections, and they were not declared a winner. And everybody saw the result, that these people actually won the elections. So that is a pointer to the fact that in those places, in those states, PDP has a strong foothold, and the vote this time around is going to count. Before we let you go quickly, the umpire, INEC, how confident, how comfortable are you with um, the INEC that we have today as to the fact that your party would get um, a fair airing in the elections? Good question. This election is an election between the people and independent, independent National Electoral Commission. Why do I say that? Is well? The people are ready to vote. They have performed their own I mean, their own responsibility by getting their PVCs, going through the pains and rigors of getting their PVC over year, over time. Now, 
The onus is on the independent national electoral commission to play its own role and to be seen to be impartial in this particular election. Not just the INEC, also the security agencies. The onus lies on them that on the election day, the will of the people is allowed to prevail. The election is conducted freely, it is fair, it is violence free, and everything is seen as it should be. And then we have these election observers from across the world who will be able to tell us, and not just the ruling party, whether election, the election is free and fair. But we are appealing to them as a as the arbiter in this process now, because by law, that is the agency that is uh, empowered to conduct the elections, that uh, they will allow the will of the people to prevail, they will not upturn the will of the people, they will be impartial, they will be non-partisan, and allow the people's wish to prevail. All right, thank you most kindly, Wodukwe Ogunbayo. Wodukwe is a spokesperson at Gwaji Campaign Organization, that's for the PDP. Thank, thank you, you so much for your time with us on the program. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. And we'd like to say again that um, Joey Bokwe, who is a spokesperson of APC Lagos, was invited to the show, but unfortunately was caught up in traffic. We tried to reach him via phone, but unfortunately, again, uh, the lines were not cooperating with us. But we hope to have him subsequently, even if it's a recorded one, so we can bring to you uh, his own opinion on the topic for discussion today. All right, so we'll take a break. And when we come back, we have more discussions. Please stay with us.